Welcome to the Dairy News and Views podcast, a production of the Iowa State University Extension and Outreach Dairy Team. Our podcast covers current educational, research, and industry tools available for your operation to manage healthy cows and calves while producing the highest quality dairy products. I'd like to welcome everybody to the ISU Dairy Podcast. Uh, Today, of course, is coming up with June Dairy Month, so we're going to talk about the June Dairy Month festivities here in Northwest Iowa, and I have Garrett Davilar uh, with me today. Uh, Garrett, welcome to the podcast, and first, tell me a little bit about County Edge Dairy. Well, County Edge Dairy, we're located three miles south of Inwood, and uh, we started the dairy there in 1974 and in 1994 my son Darren when he finished college he joined me and we've been uh, in 94 we started with 250 cows and in 2001 we went up to the present size of 650 cows and uh, we've been there since for 50 years now. You're kind of unique. Tell me about the cows that are being milked. Well, we run a uh, a crossbred herd. It's a three-way cross of Holstein, Scandinavian Red, and Montmilliard. Yeah, it's kind of non non traditional, but we like the crossbreds because we we feel we have more hybrid vigor, a stronger cow, and less less problems. Now, do they call that the Pro Cross? That is what they call the Pro Cross. Okay. And uh, we have, uh, yeah, just that, that hybrid vigor. Very good. Well, let's transition and talk a little bit about the June Dairy Month Open House that Western Iowa Dairy Alliance sponsors every year. Uh, this year, it'll be at Hickory Hill on June 14th. Tell us about the history of these open houses. Well, we decided to start that the uh, open house has probably been probably been over ten years that we've been running these open houses, and the main purpose of the open house is to educate the public, educate the city people, because that today we are so remo- so many people are so removed from the farm that they have no clue where their food comes from. Some of them think we don't need farmers. We just go to the grocery store. And we do it as a dairy because the dairy has a unique uh, ability to, to show more than the hog and the beef because we have the cows, we have the product, we have a complete description we have we have the whole thing whereas the we're not as concerned about the transmission of disease like the hogs and the chickens and so and we got yeah the, the, the cows and we milk them and not all of them but some of the dairies have the baby calves so we have the whole cycle mm-hmm. and it's it's a more complete yep. and there's more to see And we are concerned with biosecurity. We will make sure that people are safe when they are are going through this tour. The first year I was there, we had people coming, not just from Sioux County or Lyon County, but from all over Northwest Iowa and the surrounding states. What's the farthest people have traveled for this that you're aware of? Well, we we like to keep it into the, you know, into the south, southern and eastern area of our of our because we have a lot of people that come in from from Sioux City and from Spencer and from the larger towns, and that's why we why we like to keep it because it's the it's the city folks that we need to have to to show what's going on. You know, when you get into our smaller towns, our smaller communities. People are more connected, but it's these big cities that we're really after. I know last year when I helped move people from the parking lot, we saw a lot of South Dakota, 
uh, people. And as I visited, a lot of Sioux Falls folks were, came down to the event last year. We expect that this year. We take them from the car to a trolley. So tell us what they're going to see once they get on the trolley. Well, when they, when they get on the trolley, they're going to take them. I think uh, this time it's going to be a video of the a, a screen of the milking parlor. Because I'm not sure that there's going to be enough room for everybody in the milking parlor. But then they will go through and they will see where the maternity pins and where the cows are housed. And just they'll see that we as dairy farmers take good care of our animals and that cow comfort and that the cow gets taken care of well is is important. And they will also get an opportunity to see the feed that the cow eat and how we mix the feed and take it to them. When they look at the video, tell me a little bit about the parlor that they're going to see. Well, there they will, you know, they will see how the how the cows are prepped and how they're taken care of, and that cleanliness is of utmost importance. That because we're dealing with a raw food product, and so we are very concerned that we take care of that, and they will see how the cow is prepped and how long, how long it takes for that cow to milk. Let's put this in perspective. When they're on the trolley, they'll have somebody visiting with them about what they're seeing. But this is a working farm. They actually are going to see cows in the barn, eating, doing things cows do. And they hopefully will appreciate the cleanliness that we maintain as the dairy industry from the cow to the parlor to the bulk tank, and eventually in the gallon jug in the refrigerator. Yes, and that's that's the important thing, that that they see how we take care of things because the animal rights people are doing a lot of work to undo our food safety issues and, and, and things like that. So we have to be very careful. And they will they will see every they will see all the aspects of our of our operation. Now it's not just riding on the trolley. This is a family program. So they're going to have an opportunity with the kiddos to go into the kiddo tent and do some things that are entertaining to the kiddos. What are they going to see there? Well, there's going to be a uh, a, a pin where, where there's going to have the baby calves so they can, and there's going to be a, a cow there that the, there, it's a uh, artificial cow, of course, and the kids can actually milk that cow. That there, they can actually sit down and they can see how it, how it, how it goes milking. And then there's also going to be the, the Iowa corn farmers are there and that there's going to be a, a pin of not sand, but a pin of corn or a, a, a play pin of corn that they can play in. And uh, we have a lot of support from our Iowa corn and Iowa soybeans because as dairy farmers, we use a lot of their products. So they're very excited to come and show their side of the story also. The thing that I think we have to... Uh appreciate is just how much education will be going on in that youth barn. There'll be hands-on things for the kiddos to do. The corn growers will have their trailer there so folks will be able to see the whole process, uh, taking a seed of corn, growing it, chopping it, and putting it into the, the silo for a cow to eat. So, what else is going on there? I know one of the big things that people love cheeseburgers. So tell us about what they're going to get. Well, they're going to get the cheeseburgers and milk and ice cream and, uh, yeah, a good meal. And uh, I, I guess that's important that, you know, we give them after the tour that they get a good meal and, that they, it's it's a fan. This is a family event. This is 
set up for the whole family to come. And it's not just a cheeseburger. They'll get a glass of milk or a carton of milk. They'll get uh, ice cream. So uh, I think folks will enjoy themselves. And I guess one of the important things that we like to show is that all the way from the feeding to the end product, how much the dairy farm supports the community because we have the feed that we buy, we have the milk haulers, we have, well, we have the manure haulers. And, and, and the important part, the aspect of the, of the fertilizer aspect, that's a big deal. And how many people are supported? Because I think the economic impact of one dairy cow is around $25,000. Exactly. And I think that's kind of one thing which we'd like to show is how, how large an impact a dairy farm has on the local economy. Yep. You know, Iowa is the 11th largest dairy state. It was 12th till just a couple of months ago. And the fact is we affect every community. When you take that figure, $25,400 per cow, and you have a, a 500 cow dairy or a 600 cow dairy, that's a big impact to the community. Yes, and I think the thing that we have to know is that most of our dairy farms today are running 25, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. We do not take Christmas. We do not take New Year. We run every day all the time and so our we we use a lot of uh, equipment equipment and labor uh, equipment you. and labor yep yeah and, and the investment in a dairy is is huge the event's going to happen june 14th at hickory hill farms which is uh north of hospers or by hospers west of hospers and east of sioux center there we go. If you come for either from Sioux Center or Hospers, you'll come right to it. It's right on B30, I think. Yeah. So it starts at four o'clock. People can start coming and they can take the tour and go ahead and get in line for lunch. Uh, what time will it end? Well, it'll probably end around eight. That's probably then because then we have to get everything cleaned up. So because this farm is not going to stop because we're going to have a tour. This farm is going to keep on going. So we'll have to get our, get our stuff out of the way so they can continue on with their work. Very good. So before we close out today, somebody who's never been to our open house, or not been on a farm, what should they be thinking about before they get there? I guess the biggest thing that they should be thinking about is just they're going to be educated on where their food and the, where their where their milk, where their where their dairy products come from. Because you know we think about a dairy farm, we think about milk, but we got cheese, we got yogurt, we got ice cream. The end. Uh, there's so many products that are made out of dairy, and that's what they should think about. How many different products that are made out of dairy? Absolutely. We have our butter. You know, when you look at the products in the grocery store, around half of them have some kind of dairy in them, either cheese or milk or milk powder. And that's huge. You know, when mom and grandma were making meals at home we all knew what was going into them but sometimes we lose track of that when we're buying a prepared entree from the grocery store it still has a lot of dairy products in and that's one thing we have to look at because uh you know the swine people said the only thing that went to waste was the squeal and the girl in their tail but when we make cheese the whey off that cheese is a very valuable product. And if you go through your ingredient list on your cookies or anything, you will find whey. 
and that is a very high protein and a, an extremely important part of our byproduct of our cheese industry. Exactly. Well, it sounds like it's going to be an exciting uh, afternoon for people. I know it takes a tremendous amount of labor as volunteers to put this together. Kind of give us an idea of how many people are in the background making this work. There's a lot of people because there's, uh, yeah, there's probably, probably uh, 100 to 200 people and I guess I also want to give a big thank you to our uh, industry support because we get a huge support from our dairy uh, partners, our industry partners. And uh, we have to give a big thank you to them for helping us out. Absolutely. We couldn't do it without the assistance we get from the folks who are a part of our industry, but not milking cows so we're excited about that well we've covered what uh, the western iowa dairy alliance open house is all about uh, we've talked about the farm uh, if folks have a need to get a little more information they can go to our website or they can go to facebook and get uh, all the information again and save the date in their calendar. So, Garrett, thank you very much for spending time with me today on the ISU Dairy Podcast. We'll look forward to seeing you at the open house. Okay, thank you. This institution is an equal opportunity provider. For the full non-discrimination statement or combination inquiries, go to www.extension.iastate.edu backslash diversity backslash ext.